There's a lot of videos out there on how to build your own hot water solar panels. This is my version. Now I never intended to make a video about this, so my media files, my pictures and videos are very limited. But I think you'll get the idea. This shot shows the guts of my solar panel. The aluminum track is used to install radiant heat on the underside of a plywood subfloor. It is designed to be used with half-inch PEX tubing, which snaps snugly into the track. Half-inch copper tubing fits nicely too, but you have to tap it in with a rubber mallet. Next, I built two wooden boxes. They measure two feet by eight feet. This way I could get two of them out of one sheet of sheet goods. I used OSB sheathing for the back and two by fours for the sides. You need five two by fours in total. Next, I painted and caulked them inside and out to make them as waterproof as possible. Then I inserted two inch poly iso insulation in the bottom of each box, which was glued in place. Then I installed the aluminum track with the copper pipe snapped snugly in place. I used high temperature silicone which you can buy at an automotive parts store to secure the tracks to the poly iso insulation. The entire assembly was then spray painted with flat black high temperature barbecue spray paint. I ordered two pieces of quarter inch plate glass which was heat tempered for safety from my local glass supply house. I glued the glass onto the box with silicone caulking. I thought the boxes would be hermetically sealed, but moisture still found its way in and condensed on the glass on cold nights. I see this on a lot of commercial panels also. I mounted the panels on half inch galvanized plumbing pipe. This would act as a hinge so I could rotate the panels to get the best angle from the sun for different seasons. Notice the double insulation on the pipe at the top. That is the hot water return pipe that goes back to the storage tank. I hooked the two panels up in series. The storage tank is a 60 gallon superstore which is a stainless steel tank, and I believe it has a cupro nickel heat exchanger in the bottom. I got this tank for free. It's already 20 plus years old, but I'm trying to keep the cost down because let's face it, hot water is not a huge expense in the scheme of things, and I didn't want the payback to take forever. This is my prototype controller. It consists of four separate circuit boards. The top board, the black one, is an UNO computer. It holds all the logic. The red board underneath that is just a circuit board to connect all my wiring. The green board on the bottom is the liquid crystal display. And the little board on the left is the relay which controls the circulating pump. I eventually condensed this into a nice little package. I installed three temperature sensing thermocouplings. One was installed on the bottom of the tank, one was installed on the top of the tank, and ideally the third one would be in one of the solar panels. But I made a huge mistake. Years before I built the solar panels, I was doing a huge landscape job in my yard. That's when I ran the pipes because I knew someday I would get around to building the solar panels. It was poor planning on my part because I forgot to run the wire for the third sensor and there was no easy way to do it at this point with all the landscaping in the way. So I needed a different method. I installed a photoresistor outside which would sense the brightness of the sun. I installed the third thermal coupling on the inlet pipe coming into the house. Notice the two gold knobs on the left of the controller. The bottom knob controls the brightness of the liquid crystal display. The top knob controls the minimum light setting, which will start the whole process in action. Look at the bottom line on the display. 
The pod set is the potentiometer setting for the minimum light reading. The reading on the right is what the light sensor is actually sensing. So once it's higher than the pot set, the whole process begins. The circulator will kick on for 40 seconds, which is how long it takes for the hot water to get from the solar panels into the house. At this point, the thermocoupling on the inlet pipe will sense the temperature. If the temperature is 5 degrees hotter than the bottom of the tank, then the circulator will stay on. If not, it will wait 5 minutes and the process will start again. Notice that the bottom of the tank is 92.8 degrees and the inlet pipe is 100.74. So the circulator will stay on because we are making hot water. And the top of the tank is currently at 97 degrees. Well, in conclusion, I'd say that the project was a complete success. On a hot, sunny summer day, the tank often reached 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Imagine that, 60 gallons of scalding hot water, all for free. Thank you, Ra. And in the winter, on a freezing cold day, if the sun was out, the tank often reached 85 degrees. Not spectacular, but considering it's a preheater for my 40-gallon uh, electric storage tank, I think that's awesome also. I eventually added a temperature sensor in one of the solar panels, and I got rid of the photoresistor outside. Then I reprogrammed the UNO so that when the panel was 5 degrees hotter than the bottom of the tank, the circulating pump kicked on. This prevented uh, erroneous starts and stops which is less efficient because you could be pumping cold water through the tank for no reason. Um, on a side note, I sold that house and I no longer own these solar panels and the tank lasted another few years and then it sprung a leak and the people replaced it. They spent about $2,000 replacing the tank and I was like, wow, you have a lot of faith in my homemade solar system. Well, if you enjoyed this video, don't give me a thumbs up because I really don't care. And thanks for watching.